Hi everyone, and welcome to the bench. Well, today I'm joined by Brian Chan. Brian knows a lot about chronomids, loves to fish them, really knows how to tie them. And today you're going to show us one of your other special patterns. Yep, today we're going to tie a, du a dual ribbed chronomid pupa pattern. Excellent. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. For the hook, we're going to use a Mustad C49S size 10. We use a 1 8 super white metal bead for the bead. We'll tie with 6 aught black thread. We'll use fine red copper wire and fine silver copper wire for the ribs. And for the body, we'll use some red brown midge flex. Okay, I, I pinched the barb down and then I slipped the um, 1 8 inch um, white metal bead up to the uh, eye of the hook. Then I've just started to lay a foundation with the uh, 6 aught tying thread. And what we're going to do, Don, is build up a taper um, right behind the bead to get the, um, the natural uh, uh, taper uh, to the chronomid pupil pattern that, that you see when they're in the water because the um, midge flex that we're using is fairly thin material. So I'm just using that to get a bit of a taper. That looks pretty good. And then we're going to bring the tying thread back towards the bend of the hook. Now I'm tying on a size 10 simply it's easier to see, but we'll tie the identical pattern all the way down to size 16. And of course we'll use a smaller bead and then we'll even take it up a couple sizes bigger, even up to size 6 for those really big bombers that we'll okay. see in some of our really productive lakes. So the rib it is a strand of fine copper wire and a strand of fine silver copper wire. So. I've got the two strands here and we're just going to tie them in at the bend of the hook. Like so, And then we'll take our midge flex. And that is very good material. It's very stretchy, really yep. good for chronomid bodies. It's very good. It's easy to work with and um, it comes in a wide variety of colors. And As you said, it's really easy to work with. So I'm just uh, take some of that and I'm just going to Cut a bit of a taper at one end just so I can tie it in. And actually what I like to do is tie it in right near the eye of the hook and then stretch it out. Kind of smooths everything out. Mm. Yep. Bring it back. Bring my tying thread back. And then you can pull on it as hard as you want to make it as thin as you want or you can relax it to make it a thicker body. And it does form a nice segmentation. Of the you get the segmentation, there's a shine to it, and uh, you, you can vary your colors too by changing the color of your tying thread. So okay. it's a very um, good material to tie chronomid patterns with. So I'm, you can notice I'm locking the, f the material down pretty good now because it's under pressure right. and we don't want it to unravel on us. So now we just simply take our two strands of wire and uh, I'm just going to give it one turn at the butt and then bring them forward just like we're tying with a single strand on, keeping them right as close together as I can. Okay. And I see the reds of, in front of the, the reds. it really yeah. doesn't matter? It really doesn't matter. bring it right up to the bead. So the red wire just accentuates the uh, red-brown color of the actual coronamid pupa and then the silver is, is providing that that illusion of trap gas, that bubble effect. Okay. So it's a good combination. So then we just cut, go, cut the wires off and then finish it off with a whip finisher. So really a very simple pattern, but there's two or three things that make this fly work so well. The bead makes the fly sink faster and then adds the white gills to the fly. It's got a nice taper to the body. It's well segmented with the wire, and it's got the right body color of that red-brown midge flex, which is enhanced by the red copper wire. And we'll just uh, add some head cement and we're done. Thanks again for another great pattern. You're welcome.